We've all made those tacos with the help of a boxed kit, but they've got nothing on my weeknight ground beef tacos. I developed this recipe back in 2019, and it's still one of my go-tos. So we're gonna start with the ground beef, and today I'm gonna be using 90% ground beef, which is a little leaner than I would normally use for tacos, and that is because we are going to use some chorizo sausage. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Now, there's two different types of chorizo sausage that you're gonna find in the grocery store. This is Spanish chorizo. It's harder and it's already cured, so technically you could just slice it and eat it as is. But this is Mexican style chorizo. And unlike the Spanish style, this isn't cooked but when it cooks, it crumbles nicely, just like the ground beef. And it also comes with a good amount of fat, which is why we're gonna be using 90% lean ground beef today to make up for that. And it does come in a casing. So what you wanna do is just use a paring knife and run it right down the sausage link, just like that. And the reason I'm taking the casing off is just so that it doesn't stay in, you know, nickel sizes when cooking with the ground beef. It's all gonna blend in really nicely together. And we're adding it to our weeknight tacos because it's just gonna add a ton of extra smoky flavor. I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick and clean up. If for whatever reason you can't find chorizo, you can substitute spicy Italian sausage, but you're gonna need a few other ingredients. And for that recipe, just go on our website. Before we get cooking, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. I went ahead and pre-ground this because it's a good amount of black pepper. It's a teaspoon. Then I'm gonna add some salt, three quarters of a teaspoon. All right, so I'm gonna put the meat mixture there into this 12 inch nonstick skillet. I'm gonna put this over medium high heat and cook it until the beef is no longer picked, which should take six to eight minutes. And I am going in there with a wooden spoon just to break up the chorizo, just to help it along its way. Because as I said, it will crumble really nicely. And you'll notice I didn't add any oil or fat to the skillet before adding the meat. And that's because, again, it does have a good amount of fat content. So, six to eight minutes. While the meat is browning, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare some more of our ingredients. Here I have one onion and a poblano pepper. I'm going to finely chop our onion. So naturally I'm gonna Cut the onion in half, keeping the root end intact. Peel back that onion skin. And I'm gonna run my knife parallel to the board. And turn it the other way and then run my knife perpendicular all the way through. And then turn it back around, run my knife across the onion and if you think you got any big chunks of onion, simply run your knife through it a couple more times. I think that looks pretty good. And I'll repeat with the second half. I'm gonna go stir the meat. Oh, this looks so good. I'll turn my heat down just a little bit while I finish up the pepper. So the poblanos are so good. Um, they have a really nice vegetal flavor, and they're not too spicy, but if you wanted, you could always remove the seeds and the ribs right here, because that's what makes um, a pepper or chili pepper spicy. And if for whatever reason you can't find poblano peppers in your grocery store, you can substitute a green bell pepper, uh, but I would maybe add a little jalapeno or chili pepper to that as well. So again, I removed the seeds and the ribs, and now I'm just gonna run my knife through the length of the pepper and turn it 90 degrees and finally chop with my claw, my claw, which ensures that you don't get anywhere near your fingertips. Now I'm gonna add this to my meat, which has been cooking six to eight minutes. And it's no longer pink, so I know it's ready. Get everybody in there. I'm gonna cook these until the vegetables are just softened, which should take another six to eight minutes. 
When we come back, we're gonna continue to build the flavors of our tacos, and then it's gonna be time to eat. We're gonna move on to the tomatoey aspect of our tacos. So I have four plum tomatoes that I wanna core, because we're gonna use the juice and all. So when I core tomatoes, I like to cut them in half first, and then I'm going to make a V right where the core is. You can also use a paring knife for this, and then I'm gonna cut them into quarter inch pieces. This is a sharp chef's knife, so it's gonna work for the tomatoes, but you also can use a serrated knife. Put these aside, get a half a cup of water, and I'm gonna cut up some cilantro that's been stored in the fridge. So for the remaining ingredients, we have some garlic, some chipotle and adobo, and some cumin. So chipotle and adobo are one of those flavor bombs that you can add to something, like this especially. So they are smoked, dried jalapenos. And when they sit with this beautiful adobo sauce, they take on so much flavor, but they're also a little on the spicy side. So I'm gonna give these a good cut because you want them to get minced. And I'm only gonna be using a couple teaspoons, but if you have a few people in your family or some of your friends that aren't huge spice fans, I would maybe leave this part out. But I don't wanna scare you because you really should make it with them. And we've got some cumin, which is one of the usual suspects in those boxed kits. So that's three teaspoons, which is also a tablespoon of ground cumin. And then I'm gonna mince four cloves of garlic. So since I'm gonna be putting them in a garlic press, I am just going to use the flat side of my knife. And that just releases the paper from the garlic. But it keeps it pretty much intact. So I'm just gonna mince the garlic cloves with the help of our garlic press. And then just use my knife just to shave off any bits that were hanging out there, hanging out for the party. Okay, I'm gonna head back to the stove and add our aromatics here and let them cook until fragrant, which should take about 30 seconds. And I'm just stirring them just to incorporate them throughout the beef mixture. Oh, it smells so good. So now I'm gonna add a half a cup of water and our tomatoes. Oh, goodness, it smells so good. I'm gonna bring this to a simmer, put the lid on the skillet, reduce the heat to medium low, and cook until the tomatoes are beginning to break down, which should take about 10 minutes. While that's at a simmer, I'm going to char our tortillas. Now, the recipe calls for warm tortillas, so you can either do that in the microwave or you can do what I'm about to do, which is char them directly on the stovetop. And these are corn tortillas, but you could also use flour tortillas. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. And now just off the heat, I'm gonna stir in some chopped cilantro. Oh my goodness. And as you can see, the tomatoes have broken down and softened and kind of become a nice, slightly thickened sauce at this point. Let's eat. See there, yum, yum, yum. When you char tortillas or toast tortillas, it helps to kind of bring out that flavor. So in this case, it's corn, corn tortillas. So it's gonna taste like a really nice toasted corn flavor. I've got my platter here. I'm just gonna arrange a few tortillas. Some people double up. I'm just gonna go single tortilla. Just divide that evenly. But I think I'm just gonna do one, just so I can taste it for quality assurance. It's the least I could do, you know what I mean? I've got some garnishes here, I've got some chopped tomatoes, some sliced iceberg, shredded iceberg rather, and some cheese. You could also add some hot sauce, sour cream, whatever you want. This recipe makes 12 tacos, so it should feed about six people. It's not gonna be pretty, but I'm going in. Mm. This is what you want the boxed taco kit to taste like, and it never does. It's 
smoky, a little spicy. The texture of the meat and the chorizo is perfect. Nice and tender, not too pebbly. Mm. With just a little extra prep and some key ingredients, these tacos are so much better than any box kit you could buy.